All right, so a while back I did a video about Hugo, the static site generator, and I basically explained why and how you should use Hugo. It's a very simple static site generator, and it's a lot better than something like WordPress because you're just getting HTML and CSS instead of a database and a whole bunch of bloat that comes with WordPress or something like that. And so if you're a developer, Hugo is great because you can just write all of your content in Markdown right here. You can write all of your blog posts in Markdown, which a lot of developers really like, myself included. But the problem is if you want to build a site for a client or somebody else, you're probably not going to want to teach your client how to edit Markdown files and commit to Git. So you're going to have to do something else if you actually want clients to use a Hugo website that you're going to build for them. And the nice part about something like WordPress is it has a really nice CMS or content management system so that clients can go through and edit different posts, edit pages, add new posts, upload images, all the stuff that you'd expect from a typical content management system. And so I got some comments in that video about how do I make a CMS for this? And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Hugo website with Netlify CMS. So there's a few other CMSs you can use. A lot of them are paid. You need some subscription in order to use them. But Netlify CMS is great because it's completely free. All you have to do is set it up yourself, which is not too complicated. I'm going to teach you how to set it up on Netlify.com, which is a great host for these kinds of static sites. And for most sites, it's completely free, unless you have some gigantic website. But for most small to medium sized websites, Netlify will be completely free for you. And so this is just what the Netlify CMS looks like briefly. So it looks pretty similar to something like WordPress. You have posts over here. You can have pages as well. And your client can go into the posts, or you if you want a CMS. You know, it's not just for your clients. Some people prefer working in a WYSIWYG rather than something like Markdown. But they can go through here, they can choose an image as the featured image, they can use a WYSIWYG editor like you would expect and change everything very easily. You can add different sections so they can customize whatever they want. You can even make site settings so they can change this. And then you can get all the variables that they pass to the CMS inside the code inside Hugo. I'll go over that a little bit later. But I just wanted to show you the CMS, so it's very nice to use, modern, it looks nice. So your clients will not really have any problem using this at all. All right, so let me just get into how we're going to integrate this with our website. So it can be a little complicated. So what I have right here is a starter theme with Netlify CMS integration already built in. So if you want everything taken care of for you, then I would recommend using this theme that I have built already. And of course, this is just a very basic theme right here. As you can see, there are absolutely no frills. It's basically just plain text and not much more. I have another video on theming Hugo if you want to go through and customize the theme yourself. And I'm gonna assume that you already have some basic knowledge of how theming works in Hugo. So go check out that video if you haven't already. But let me show you how I took this uh, simple theme that I had here and integrated it with Netlify CMS. So first things first, in your Hugo website, you're going to want to go into the static folder right here and create an admin directory and create this config.yaml file right here. So once you have that done, uh, you want to just put in all of this right here. I'll go over line by line what all of these do, but I will recommend copy and pasting this from something, say from the GitHub that I have right here and then paste it into your project just so you can get an easy start. So this backend is going to integrate with Git Gateway. And so we're going to use Git Gateway later with Netlify in order to authenticate with Netlify. And then the branch is just going to be the branch of your GitHub where the project is located. The easiest way to do this is with GitHub. You can use some other services like GitLab or Bitbucket, but I'm just going to be covering GitHub in this video. And then over here we have the media folder. This is going to be the folder where uploaded images are going to go. So if the, if the user in the admin panel uploads an image, it's going to go to static slash images. And the public folder is just going to be the folder relative to your URL. So if you put it in static, it's just going to be in your base URL. So let's say your URL.com slash images. So just put images here or 
the media folder without the static part. And then right here we can set all the collections. Let me pop open their demo site for the Netlify CMS. Collections is going to be everything that was on the left side right here. So you can make as many as you want. You can make posts, you can make pages, you can even make site settings if you want. But basically everything is going to be accessible on the left sidebar over here. So as you can see we have posts right here and this is going to be doing the same thing that we have over here. So first we're going to get the name. This is just going to be the name in the back end. So post. This is going to be the label on the side here. Post right here. And then it's going to be in the folder content slash posts. This is going to be right here uh, in your Hugo main directory whatever folder that you have your blog posts in. I have them in posts. And then the path. So whenever a new post is created, it will be created in the slug of the new post. And then index. So as you can see, uh, the slug of the new post is right here. And uh, index.md has been put there. Thanks to setting this path right here. And this is optional right here, this media folder and public folder. But if you specify this, let's say just nothing right here, you can also add images. Like say if you want this to be inside another subdirectory inside this post. But having the media folder right here and the public folder, that will put all of the images that that will put all of the images that they upload for this post inside this post directory. If you don't put this here, then all of them will be in the static slash images. Uh, or the default folder up here. But for me, I like to have the images in my posts inside the content directory, so that's why I leave these in here. And this create right here, true. This allows other users to create new documents. If you only want them to be editable, then you can just change this to false. And finally, we're going to get the fields for each document. So this is going to be the front matter for each post. And so we're going to be setting the title, the publish date, featured image and the body. So the label is going to be on the front end of the CMS. That's what your logged in administrators will see. And the name will be what the back end sees. So as you can see here, title, date, image, and markdown, those are all going to be corresponding right here. So title will change this title, of course. Date will change this. If we had another one here with image, then it would overwrite this, of course. And markdown is just going to be the body right here. So basically, we're allowing all of these to be changed inside the CMS. And then the widget is just going to be what field that they see, either a string, a date time image, or a markdown WYSIWYG editor. So I think all of that is fairly self-explanatory. And of course, it'll look something like this inside the CMS. So you'll have the title here, the published date here, image, and body right here. All right, so for the pages right here, let me just show you how it looks on my back end right here. So this is the CMS for this website right here. And so you can define which pages that you want specifically to be editable right here. So you can do that with creating a new collection called Pages. So the name is Pages on the back end. Uh, the label is Pages over here on the side. And then under Files, you'll want to get the files that you specifically want to be edited. For me, that's the home page and the About page right here. So let's just open up the About page at first. The file is going to be the location of this inside the content directory, of course. So the about page is under about slash index.md. Let's just open that up right here. And it's just the title and the body right here. And so we have the label and the name for the front end and the back end. And inside fields here, we just want to put which fields that we want to be editable. So for me, I just want the title and the body to be able to be changed. That's all there is for this simple about page right here. And so if I put these two fields here, they are able to edit both of these. Now, if you want to have a few more fields, let's say you have a home page and maybe it's a lot more complicated. You have different sections and all of that. So what you can do here is let me just show you uh, the home page right here. And I have all this different front matter. So I have a title, a blurb and a section with a heading and text right here. And if you want to see the template for this, it's just going to be params title, params blurb, and just all of these params. And the params are derived from the front matter here. So what you can do is you can create kind of a complicated layout here and then just have each field be individually editable here in the back end. And you can do that 
by, of course, putting the same fields as the about page right here. We have the title and we have the blurb right here. They can type whatever they want here. I just want to give them text right here. I don't want to give them so much freedom to have a WYSIWYG editor here. Maybe I just want some simple text here. And you can also create a subsection with the widget object right here. And inside the section, you can have even more fields in here. And that's how you can get a collapsible section right here. Maybe you have a ton of different fields on here and you want to make it easier on them. So they can just click to expand this section and then fill in these. Maybe close it out if there's a ton of different fields that they need to see. And by just defining all of these inside the config YAML file, they're going to be able to change all of these as much as they want. All right, and that's all there is to the config.yaml file. Now there's still a little bit more that we actually need to do in order to get this set up. So in addition to this config file, you're going to want to create an index.html inside your static admin folder. And inside here, we're going to just have a very basic HTML document with a couple of scripts on here. So we have a script here for authentication with Netlify identity. This is going to be how you get logged in. I will show you how to use Netlify identity in a little bit, but this is just so that people can log in correctly. And this is so that it actually shows the CMS right here. This is the script that will generate all of this. And either you can just copy this from my GitHub or it's also in the Netlify documentation. I'll leave a link to this in the description so you can set up this in your own website. And in addition to this admin page, you'll also want to insert a couple of scripts around your website. So first off, we need this identity script also in the header of your document so that people can log in successfully. And then inside your footer, you're going to want to put this script right here. Again, you can copy it from my GitHub or from the documentation. And what this script does is whenever you log in, it'll basically just redirect you to the admin page just to make things a little bit easier if you have a user that wants to log in. But those are all the scripts that are necessary. But that's everything in the code that you really need to touch. Just add a couple of scripts, uh, config file and uh, index.html for the admin page. And now we can get this set up on Netlify and get everything working correctly. So I'm going to assume that you have a Netlify account already. If you don't, it's very easy to set up. And of course, like I said, the easiest way to do this is just to click on this deploy to Netlify button right here. So this will pop open Netlify right here and it'll set everything up for you. It'll set up Netlify identity so that people can log in. It'll set up the Git gateway so it can connect to GitHub correctly so that whenever your users create new posts, it will automatically update in the GitHub. So you can just click on this, click connect to GitHub, set up your account, push OK, and you are done. Let me just show you how this looks. So you would authorize and then create a new repository name. This is going to be the repository where your site is located at. So let's just say we want Hugo starter theme Netlify CMS test. That'll be the name of my new repository in GitHub. I've already created this though. So let me just show you how this looks on my Netlify. All right, so I have my Hugo starter Netlify CMS. And like I said, I already have the identity set up and the Git gateway. But if you don't have it set up already, then you're going to want to go into identity here Somewhere on this page, there should be an enable button. And from there, you can invite users. So you can invite your client, just put in their email address and send it to them. You'll probably need to invite yourself as well, but I've already gone and done that. And you also need to set up the Git gateway, but this is already done if you click the button in my GitHub repository. But if you didn't, it's gonna be under identity. And then you go down to the bottom and under services, there's going to be uh, Git Gateway right here. You're going to want to enable Git Gateway and then uh, authorize it with your GitHub. I think it'll automatically walk you through the process if you just click enable Git Gateway right here. But if for some reason you're having trouble, I'll leave a link to the documentation uh, to help you set up Git Gateway if you need any help. But it should be pretty easy. All right. And once that's done, you should just be able to go to your website, type in slash admin right here. And then it'll take you to the login page right here. You would click login with Netlify identity and then put in your username and password here. So whenever you invite a user via email, they will just get a link in their email uh, prompting them to set up a password. So they would just click that, type in their password, and then they can now come to the admin page and log in successfully. Let me just put in my email and password right here. All right, and we are now logged in. Now we can create any posts, we can change any pages and do all of that. So finally, let me just show you how it looks whenever you create or edit a post. 
let me just go to my GitHub right here. Okay, so this is the repository that I created uh, whenever I clicked on this button right here. So this is linked with my Netlify site right here. So assuming I set up everything correctly, whenever I create a new post here, it should automatically update the GitHub right here. Let's just see if this works. Let's create a new post. No, we don't want the backup. Another post. We can even put an image here as well. Let me just put this nice wallpaper in here. Let's say choose that and then put in a body and click publish publish now and so the only difference between this and a traditional CMS is it does actually need time to rebuild the website so your clients might not see the update immediately let me just go back to the main website here and it probably hasn't updated yet so it actually has because the site is pretty small but if you have a bigger site and it takes a little bit longer to build I know Hugo is pretty fast but it could be a few seconds to a minute before it actually gets updated so you might want to let your clients know about that so they're not going crazy as to why it's not updating immediately. But we can click this. We have an image. We have the text here. That's perfect. That's all we ever wanted. And if you go back to the GitHub right here and reload this, then it's just going to have a commit that's automatically done from Netlify. We now have a new post one minute ago called another post. And it has uploaded this all automatically, all from the CMS and it's very easy for your clients to use. And it's just going to make life very easy if you have some clients. So I would just make this a private GitHub repository and have your clients uh, push to this, which they can do as soon as you send them an invite in Netlify Identity. So again, you would just go into your Netlify site, Identity, invite them, your clients in, send them the link to your website slash admin, so now you have an admin panel just like you would see in something like WordPress or Drupal or any of these CMSs. And that's right, you can finally stop making WordPress sites now that you know how to set up a Hugo site with a CMS. And so finally, this is just a very basic example. There's a lot more that you can do with this. You can host it all yourself if you want. If you don't want to have all these scripts right here, you can install them yourself with NPM and configure everything. This is built in React, so if you really wanted to customize your admin panel, you can do that if you have any React.js skills. So there's a lot more that you can do with this, but that's way beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to give you a very basic example of how you can do this. And of course, if you want something easy to just set it up in an instant, all you would do is go to my GitHub repository, which I'll have in the description, click Deploy to Netlify, and you're all set.